uh, uh, tried to cover here were sort of five main themes in the end to try to give it some sort of organizational coherence. Uh, the first of this was uh, demographic and socioeconomic trends, and here we were looking at things such as labor market participation and earnings of newcomers, and some of the evolving uh, patterns here. Uh, in uh, particular, the ongoing sort of uh, challenge of um, the less than optimal uh, labor market uh, outcomes of immigrants uh, who have high uh, human, uh, most of whom have very high uh, uh, human uh, capital. Also, we looked at education and training, uh, looking at both uh, uh, what immigrants had achieved uh, uh, in their home countries and abroad, and uh, after coming to Canada. Uh, certainly, housing uh, was another area that we looked at, and some of the serious problems, especially in gateway cities. Uh, health, mental health, and well being civic and political participation and some of the slow progress that's being uh, made here. Uh, a second area we looked at was uh, integration pathways and dynamics, uh, particularly around uh, uh, areas of immigrant selection here. And obviously we know there's lots of significant changes that have taken place on this front with a much stronger focus on economic forms of immigration, but looking at sort of short-term goals, short-term achievements. Uh, the third area was newcomer characteristics and settlement needs and outcomes. And in particular, we focus on temporary migrants here. And we'll, I'll say more about this shortly. Uh, but especially uh, temporary foreign workers, and there's various categories that they fall into, and then international uh, students. Uh, fourthly was the area of, uh, under the uh, title of welcoming communities and settlement services. And uh, looking at things here such as uh, community uh, reception, uh, settlement service uh, organizations. We'll say more about that shortly. Uh, and here we were looking both at gateway cities but also smaller communities and what some of the literature is saying uh, with regard to that. And um, also uh, the role of large uh, agencies but also the smaller agencies of some of the ethno-specific agencies and also issues such as uh, suburban uh, settlement of newcomers and then some of the gaps in terms of where settlement uh, services haven't caught up to those geographical areas, so those geographical service gaps that have emerged. Uh, fifthly, we covered the area of international and transnational perspectives. I think it's really important uh, for seeing uh, our immigration uh, system and uh, programs and services uh, through other kinds of uh, lenses. Uh, I think this can be very enlightening. Uh, uh, and um, uh, so we, we looked at this uh, type of perspective. Uh, as well, uh, we also identified a number of emerging research needs. And these basically fell into two main areas. Um, first of all, changing migrant categories and service impacts. And then secondly, long-term settlement and integration experiences. Uh, and given the uh, scope of the study and the limited time that I have here, uh, we're going to uh, uh, just give you a sense of uh, uh, some of these research sort of needs and questions uh, this morning at this stage. So the first area in terms of research needs that uh, we identified then was changing migrant categories and service impacts. And there's a number of areas that are covered under this. Uh, as indicated in this slide, uh, certainly the idea of settlement service needs, interventions, and gaps for migrant workers, international students, and other temporary migrants, the impact of changing migration policies and clients, and economic resource base of settlement service work, and how have client demographics uh, within the settlement sector shifted and what are the implications for this shift in terms of the viability of the settlement uh, sector. Uh, we know, for example, that uh, CIC uh, continues to be the major, major funding source for settlement services, but its mandate restricts funding basically to landed immigrants in certain categories of uh, um, refugees. But there are very large numbers of migrants to Canada that do not fit this designation, yet many of these people are in fact on pathways to permanent residency. Certainly the Canadian experience class within temporary foreign workers, uh, foreign students have been, have been certainly targeted, for instance. Uh, and research confirms that investments in settlement services in the first years after arrival do make a substantial difference for positive labor market and social integration. Um, 
And there's a great demand uh, from uh, these uh, groups of uh, migrants uh, on settlement agencies, yet there's no funding support for these. So there's, there's a lot of stress that's been putting on the agencies. There's certainly need. And so this is one of the, uh, the areas uh, that certainly has been identified as a gap and, and needs further exploration. Um, also, we know that there's, uh, 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 given some of the emphasis of where the government has moved, uh, uh, greater investments in pre-arrival information for newcomers and uh, questions of how settlement agencies can play an active role in these new programming uh, directions. Uh, so those are some of the things that are sort of identified in that area. Uh, also uh, under this uh, same category, uh, the, the notion of uh, business partnerships and the, uh, uh, the importance, the growing importance of business partnerships. Uh, and this has become increasingly significant as businesses uh, have become more important actors in terms of settlement selection. And we certainly see this in terms of temporary foreign workers, and we see this as well in terms of such things as provincial nominee programs. Now we know, for instance, that partnering with business around job mentoring, bridging programs, and like, like uh, programs uh, have been highly effective in linking immigrants to skills commensurate employment. Uh, we also know that there's been a blockage in terms of the full utilization of immigrant human capital in the labor market uh, because uh, at the employer end, because employers are not always very sensitive uh, to the, uh, the value that uh, immigrants uh, bring uh, to this country. And has, hence there's a need for greater employment engagement in this regard. Because uh, it's important in terms of improving immigrant labor market outcomes and enhancing business productivity. Uh, also business uh, partnerships can play a role in assisting uh, to help forge uh, uh, bridging social capital. So once again this idea of greater and ways of having greater employer engagement uh, has you know, become one of, certainly one of the areas that's identified. Uh, another area here under these, this larger category is funding and accountability reforms for the nonprofit sector, nonprofit service uh, providers. Um, I'm not going to go into all of the details of this. There's a lot of issues attached to it. Um, uh, but the, the funding model that currently exists uh, has a lot of problems with it. Uh, the accountability rules uh, around it that agencies are asked to uh, abide by are, are cumbersome and uh, uh, very costly uh, and don't improve uh, in most instances services. Uh, in fact, I think there are some cost neutral reforms that could be uh, achieved here that um, could actually help uh, in terms of settlement in the sector itself. Uh, longer term uh, funding uh, would be one of these. You don't even have to have more funding, but sort of better dollars rather than bad dollars uh, could, could go a long way here. And also even the uh, government's own blue ribbon panel had talked about the problems of um, uh, bureaucratic accountability uh, types of measures. So there certainly could be reforms around that. Uh, also, the sector, uh, nonprofit sector, has been asked uh, uh, by government to find alternative funding sources increasingly. And this is inc very challenging, especially in a period of austerity. So I think all of these are areas that need further exploration and uh, examination and raise many questions. Uh, another area is the, uh, that we touch upon in the report is newcomers' experience with uh, economic downturns, in particular the last. Uh, uh, recession uh, as a result of the financial crisis of 2008 uh, uh, to 2010. And uh, I think we need, uh, uh, one of the questions that arises is, uh, what are the ongoing impacts of this? We know that there are scarring effects that happen during economic crisis for immigrants that stay with them for long periods of time, perhaps for their full uh, types of career. Uh, we know that in the last uh, uh, recession, that immigrants, uh, especially those with five years or less uh, years in the country, bore the brunt uh, in terms of unemployment uh, out of that uh, recession. And uh, so we need to sort of look at this and we pr probably also need programs that are going to address some of these, uh, these challenges. Um, the, uh, the second area that we were looking at is long-term settlement and integration uh, experiences. And uh, here, uh, 
we, uh, uh, I think there's a real value in terms of longitudinal uh, studies, the need for, for more longitudinal studies so we actually can find out what's happening to cohorts of immigrants as they, they come through. Um, and I think this is especially important uh, given all of the changes that have come to immigration policy and programs uh, recently. We really need to empirically find out what's uh, happening on the ground and also understand more about what the, uh, from the voices of immigrants themselves about their experiences with this period of time. Um, uh, in relation to this, we also need alternative sources of, debt, uh, of data uh, uh, with regard to settlement needs and outcomes. Uh, given what's happened around the census and given a lot of the uh, cutbacks to uh, Statistics Canada, we have less data sources now. Uh, and uh, good policy and program does need evidence-based foundations. So uh, finding alternative uh, sources of, uh, of data uh, I think is, uh, is imperative and I think one of those areas might be actually with uh, immigrant agencies themselves. They do collect a lot of data. In fact, there is a, uh, a SHRC project that's ongoing here uh, at uh, uh, York uh, that's looking at uh, agency data, data uh, led by Ann Kim. Uh, so I think that I'm part of that, and, uh, 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 and I think that's an interesting uh, uh, area to uh, explore further. Um, uh, the Canadian experience in the international context, I'm just going to wrap up quickly here. Um, uh, Canada, I think, has very deservedly been seen as an international leader in immigration policy and programming over the, uh, at least more recent, well, uh, over the past 30 years, put that in a bit of context, uh, its settlement su su service support programs have been classified as best practices uh, internationally uh, uh, in, in the recent past. And Canada has, of course, been an immigrant destination country. So we have lots of experiences with newcomers. However, I think we often become very myopic in terms of looking at this because we have been leaders. And, uh, and when we do look elsewhere, we tend to look to Australia, we tend to look to the United States, but not too far uh, beyond that. Um, but other countries actually have other experiences with uh, newcomers, and there's a lot to learn from that, and a lot to learn by looking through their lenses, both at their successes and failures. So having that kind of uh, scope, I think, is important for informing uh, more of uh, future research. And finally, um, uh, I think we need uh, greater linkages between objective settlement outcomes and subjective life, life satisfaction that immigrants have, have come to find. So, uh, you know, successful integration can be measured in part by asking immigrants what their experiences have been like. And that can help us to identify where they see the successes, uh, where they see problems and alienation. And the longitudinal survey of immigrants to Canada, uh, renewing that, uh, is, I think, a good place to begin with regard to that. Thank you.